Ray Dalio, he's an investor who runs the largest hedge fund in the world called Bridgewater. One of his specialties is looking at market cycles. Are markets poised to crash? Are they poised to go up? What are the patterns that we can see? In this video, we go over Dalio's six signals that he uses to determine if the stock market is in a bubble. But he's not just looking at bubbles, he's looking in particular for bubbles that are about to pop and crash the market. First is the prices relative to traditional measures. So one of the easiest ways that we can do this is simply by looking at the P-E ratio. If we look at the S&P 500 P-E ratio, we can see that it's sitting at a high amount right now, 45.3. This is much higher than the average that we see of 15 across time. But Dalio makes a good point and says, we have to compare this to other asset classes. This way we have something to measure it against. So in order to do this, we have to do a little bit of math. So stick with me. The PE ratio currently is 45.3. If we do a little bit of algebra and we reverse it, this implies an earnings yield of 2.2%. So if there was no growth in the market, we would get a 2.2% return. But we need to include growth, and right now, business growth in the USA is around 2% over the past 10 years. So if we add the 2% growth onto the 2.2 earnings yield, we get a total return of 4.2%. Now if we take a look at the bond market, Bonds are currently yielding around 1.5%. That's the 10-year treasury bond. So if we compare the return we get in the stock market relative to the return that we get in the other main asset, which is bonds, the stock market is not overly expensive. That is why Ray Dalio, when he looked at this first measure, he got somewhat frothy conditions relative to previous market bubbles. That's for the market as a whole. However, if you look at emerging tech, it's a different story in terms of price, and that reads frothy. So note that one down, and let's move on to the second measure, which we'll have in Dalio's own words. The second is prices are discounting unsustainable conditions. So unsustainable starts to be part of this picture of a bubble. Uh, unsustainable means that by the nature of the buying, whoever is doing the buying and however that supply demand, that means that that won't be sustained and that produces a correction or prices going down. And as you can see right now, in terms of supply and demand, the way investors are buying, it's in a relatively sustainable way in terms of the overall market. When we look at emerging tech, however, that's when we have a bit of a problem. That's a frothy amount of unsustainable investing going on there. With signal three, Dalio takes a look at the new buyers that have entered into the market. Ones that generally don't know too much about investing, have no experience and are simply investing because they see their friends making money in the stock market. The example that Dalio gives is, let's say you're at a cocktail party for work and people come up to you and they start talking about their recent investments in the market and you ask them, well, have you ever invested before? They say, no, not before this. Did you buy the stock at a reasonable price? They say, I don't know how to calculate intrinsic value. You ask, do you even know what a stock is? and they fumble around for an answer. You find out that they're simply investing because the stock market has been on a 12 year bull run and has made other people rich. When you have a lot of new investors entering the market with little understanding of it, it's a signal of a bubble. Right now in the total market, levels are at a frothy amount and in terms of emerging tech, it's showing big signs of a bubble. So many new investors are buying simply in the hopes of becoming rich. This leads us on to the fourth sign, which is... 
This is a signal where the general vibe in the market is that you can only make money. The stock market will only go up. There's a lot of quick profits to be made. You just need to be invested in the market. A prime example of this was the dot-com bubble. There were celebrity advertisements about investing in the market. When I see green, I buy, 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 and even a hint of red, then I sell. Everyone just wanted to make a quick profit and those who weren't invested felt dumb because they were seeing people who weren't as smart as they were making a lot of money. Right now, this signal is sitting, at least according to Dalio's measures, in the frothy range, meaning somewhat dangerous and somewhat in a bubble. If we take a look at emerging tech, once again, this signal points towards a bubble in this sector. Next thing that we have to look at when trying to determine if the market is in a bubble is how much leverage is in the system. Are people using their hard-earned money to invest in the market or are they simply borrowing it? The more borrowing that is going on is an indication of risky behavior. We all know how the housing bubble popped in 2008. It was from too much borrowing, too much debt, subprime mortgages. If we take a look at what this indicator is currently reading for Dalio, it's in the somewhat frothy zone. This means there's probably a bit too much borrowing that is going on, but it is somewhat sustainable. However, once again, if you look at the tax sector, there are bubble signals there. You have too much people borrowing money in the hopes of making quick profit, and this is not sustainable. The last signal that Dalio looks at is buyers slash businesses having extended forward purchases. So an example that we can use for what Dalio is talking about here is buying commodities. Normally, you would just buy commodities like corn or sugar or oil whenever you needed it. A forward purchase is when you buy more of these than you need because you're worried about prices going up and you have to spend more, aka inflation. If there's extended forward purchases, it means more people are doing these to a greater extent and it's a sign of investors being scared of worrying economic conditions to come. So right now, in today's total market, there is no bubble when it comes to extended forward purchases. The emerging tech, it reads somewhat frothy. I kind of feel like I'm reading out a weather report here. Now, let's take a look at this graph as a whole. First of all, the total market, there are a few somewhat worrying signals when it comes to prices, new buyers, bullish sentiments, high leverage. It could point towards a bubble perhaps starting to form, but we are definitely, at least not according to Dalio's signals, in a clear big bubble. However, emerging tech, that is a different story. These signals, half of them point towards a clear bubble and the other half point towards frothy market conditions. So all of those people investing in new tech looking for quick money, don't be so sure that your money is safe and that that particular market is not in a bubble. But I think most of us are interested in the market as a whole and Dalio has a graph that aggregates the percentage of the USA market being in a bubble. This indicator is not as high as it was in the dot-com crash, it's not as high as it was in the Great Depression in 1929, but it is higher than what it was in the 2008 housing crash. It's currently sitting at around 80%. So that means we shouldn't be scared of a crash, but we should be at least alert and prepared for one. Because if you take a look at the longer term cycle, there are some ingredients that don't add up well. You've got the high debt to GDP, which we've seen a recent spike of. You've got the low interest rates, which basically can't go any lower. And of course, you've got that dramatic increase in money supply started in 2010 and rebooted again with the pandemic in 2020. So let's let Dalio sum this up. Mr. Dalio. Is the market in a bubble soon to pop? I would say you can't say the stock market is in the highest a bubble. You can't even say that it's necessarily in a bubble. You have to distinguish 
uh, which ones, which stocks um, are in a bubble or have been in a bubble uh, from those that are not in a bubble. There are a lot of stocks that aren't. And um, at that bubble is a little bit like the bond markets bubble. So I hope that gave you a little bit of flavor of uh, bubbles and uh, how I look at them and where we are. Thank you.